world and preach the gospel. And she was preaching at a, at a church in Germany in the 1950s, years after the war. And she was preaching on love. And she was talking about the love of God, how wonderful it is, and the forgiveness of God, how wonderful it is. And there, after the service, a man in a trench coat and a hat was walking. You know how it is. And you know, guest speaker comes. Everybody shakes their hand as they're leaving. And she could see this man coming. And she recognized him as none other than one of the guards in Rovensbrook. And immediately the indignity and the, and the flood of the abuse that was heaped upon her, her sister, and the other women that were in this camp, the scripture says the indignity and all these things, they flooded back and the, and the hatred she had towards the Nazis who had killed her family as represented by this man who had literally harmed her and her sister. And she, all of those memories just flooded her mind. And as he approached her, he stuck out his big German hand and he said, Sister, it is good to know that God is a forgiving God. And she felt nothing. But ice. But she remembered the love of God has for her. And that while she was yet a sinner, while she still cherished this hatred for this, this person who was now extending his hand and wanting forgiveness, she realized that it was her sin that nailed Jesus to the cross too. And with no feeling in her heart and no sentiment towards this individual whatsoever, she extended her hand as he asked for forgiveness. And she says, I forgive you, brother, and I love you. And she describes in her book that as she did this, it was literally as if warm water or electricity began to flow through her hand, up her elbow, through her shoulder, across the right side of her body, into her head, and all the way down her other side of her arm, and then down through her feet. And then all of a sudden, the feeling and the love was there for the man that she had not before. God will give you feelings that you have not right now for those that you find difficult to love when you decide to, as an act of the will, in obedience to him, give yourself to him and allow him to love them through you. He'll, he'll do this. I promise that he will do. I'm not making a promise. I'm just telling you that this is what the Scripture says. And it's true to life and it's true to experience, but we have to walk in the light. His love is perfected in us only when we choose to abide. As Andrew comes forward to a close in song, let's just meditate on what it is that God is asking us to do. What is it that we need to bring before the cross and confess a sin? Who is it that we need to extend forgiveness to, mercy towards, patience towards, love towards? This is a very, very practical message. This is not just some theological abstract concept. Because if we're to walk in renewal and fellowship with Christ, we must walk in renewal and fellowship with one another. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, apart from you and your spirit, this is absolutely impossible. It's not natural. It's completely unnatural. There's nothing natural about loving people that don't love us or that are difficult to love. Nothing could be more difficult. Father, we are asking that you would transform us, that you would pour out your spirit upon us, that you would bring us to the foot of the cross that we would see our sin there. We would see our sin not only as forgiven, but purified. And Lord, we just ask that your spirit would indwell us and fill us and empower us. We ask this, Father, so that your son would be manifest in us and that fruit would be real and it'd be abiding and it'd be plentiful and it would bring you praise. Pray this in Jesus' name. Amen.